Chapter Six of Australian Legendary Tales Folklore. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Ted Newton. Australian Legendary Tales Folklore by Mrs. K. Langlaw Parker. Chapter Six. The Wee Wombins and the Piggy Billa. Two Wee Wombin brothers went out hunting. One brother was much younger than the other, and smaller. So when they sighted the Nimu, the elder one said to the younger, You stay quietly here, and do not make a noise, or Piggy Billa, whose camp we passed just now, will hear you and steal the emu if I kill it. He is so strong. I'll go on and try to kill the emu with this stone. The little wee umbin watched his big brother sneak up to the emu, crawling along almost flat on the ground. He saw him get quite close to the emu, then spring up quickly and throw the stone with such an accurate aim as to kill the bird on the spot. The little brother was so rejoiced that he forgot his brother's caution, and he called aloud in his joy. The big Wiyumbin looked round and gave him a warning sign, but too late. Piggy Billa had heard the cry and was hastening to watch them. Quickly, Big Wiyumbin left the emu and joined his little brother. Piggy Billa, when he came up, said, What have you found? Nothing, said the big Wiyumbin. Nothing but some mistletoe berries. It must have been something more than that, or your little brother would not have called down so loudly. Little Wee Umbin was so afraid that Piggy Billa would find their emu and take it, that he said, I, um, I hit a little bird with a stone, and I was glad I could throw so straight. It was no cry for the killing of a little bird, or for the fighting of mistletoe berries that I heard. It was for something much more than neither or it would not have called down so joyfully. If you do not tell me at once, I will kill you both. The Wee Umbin brothers were frightened, for Piggy Billa was the great fighter and very strong. So when they saw he was really angry, they showed him the dead emu. Just what I want for my supper he said, and so saying, dragged it away to his own camp. The Wee beans followed him, and even helped him to make a fire to cook the emu, hoping by so doing to get their share given to them. But Piggy Billa would not give them any, he said, he must have it all for himself. Angry and disappointed, the Wiyumbins marched straight off and told some black fellows who lived near that Piggy Billa had a fine fat emu just cooked for supper. Up jumped the black fellows, seized their spears, bade the Wiyumbins quickly lead them to Piggy Billa's camp, promising them for so doing a share of the emu. When they were within range of spear shot, the black fellows formed a circle, took aim, and threw their spears at Piggy Billa. As the spears fell thick on him, sticking out all over him, Piggy Billa cried aloud, Bingalo, Bingalo, you can have it, you can have it. But the black fellows did not desist until Piggy Billa was too wounded even to cry out. 
Then they left him in a mass of spears and turned to look for the emu. But to their surprise, they found it not. Then, for the first time, they missed the Wiyumbins. Looking round, they saw their tracks go into where the emu had evidently been. Then they saw that they had dragged the emu to their new new, which was a humpy made of grass. When the Wiyumbin saw the black fellows coming, they caught hold of the emu and dragged it to a big hole they knew of, with a big stone at its entrance, which stone only they knew the secret of moving. They moved the stone, got the emu and themselves into the hole, and the stone in place again before the black fellows reached the place. The black fellows tried to move the stone, but could not. Yet they knew that the Wiyumbins must have done so, for they had tracked them right up to it, and they could hear the sound of their voices on the other side of it. They saw there was a crevice on either side of the stone, between it and the ground. Through these crevices they drove in their spears, thinking they must surely kill the brothers. But the Wiyumbins, too, had seen these crevices and had anticipated the spears. So they had placed the dead emu before them to act as their shield and into its body were driven the spears of the black fellows extended for the Wiyumbins. Having driven the spears well in, the black fellows went off to get help to move the stone. But when they had gone a little way, they heard the Wiyumbins laughing. Back they came, and speared again, and again started for help only as they laughed to hear once more the laughter of the brothers. The Wiyumbins, finding their laughter, only brought back the black fellows to a fresh attack, determined to keep quiet, which, after the next spearing, they did. Quite sure, when they heard their spear shot followed by neither conversation nor laughter, that they had killed the Wiyumbins at last. The black fellows hurried away to bring back the strength and cunning of the camp to remove the stone. The Wiyumbins hurriedly discussed what plan they had better adopt to elude the black fellows, for well they knew that should they ever meet any of them again, they would be killed without mercy. And as they talked, they satisfied their hunger by eating some of the emu flesh. After a while, the black fellows returned, and soon was the stone removed from the entrance. Some of them crept into the hole, where, to their surprise, they found only the remains of the emu, and no trace of the Wiyumbins. As those who had gone in first crept down and told of the disappearance of the Wiyumbins, others, incredulous of such a story, crept in to find it confirmed. They searched round for tracks, seeing that their spears were all in the emu. It seemed to them probable the Wiyumbins had escaped alive, but if so, whither they had gone, their tracks would show. But search as they would, no tracks could they find. All they could see were two little birds which sat on a bush near the hole, watching the black fellows all the time. The little birds flew round the hole sometimes, but never away, always returning to the bush and seeming to be discussing the whole affair. But what they said, the black fellows could not understand. But as time went on, and no sign was ever found of the Wiyumbins,
the black fellows became sure that the brothers had turned into the little white-throated birds which had sat on the bush by the hole so they supposed to escape their vengeance and ever afterwards the little white throats were called weumbins and the memory of pigibilla is perpetuated by a sort of porcupine and eater which bears his name and whose skin is covered closely with miniature spears sticking all over it End of chapter six